Hey guys, D-Mike here for another episode of Super Nintendo Sundays. This is going to be the finale of Mega Man X, so I hope you're ready for it. Get your last jollies in for this beautiful game. So this is the third Sigma stage. This is where the majority of the rest of the Maverick fights are going to come in, and we've got some kind of interesting boss fights as well. So first up here is the Armored Armadillo. It's actually a an attack that we didn't see the first time around when I played through the initial level was that he can release built-up energy. For some reason, when I played through this game and I've done kind of casual run-throughs, I don't know why it takes me so much time to develop muscle memory for like these boss fights and to be able to really figure them out. Like, this is only technically the second time that I've played through this boss fight. After, you know, beating Armored Armadillo the first time in the initial wave. But, like, why why am I so much better at it now than I was? It didn't really take me that many tries, so I don't know. Just trying to be a little reflective here, I suppose. But that's okay. Got plenty of stupid Mega Man keys on the outside here. If you need to pick up that health item, you can. I'm gonna give it a couple of shots here with the, uh, the boomerang. I still don't quite know how the the gimmick of the boomerang works, but I didn't get that health power up. But I got the one from the from the bat, so that was nice. And speaking of not knowing how the boomerang mechanic works, you're about to see it for the next minute of your lives. It's better than it was. I'm not entirely sure how you get the boomerangs to shoot up versus down. I still haven't figured that out. So in the same vein, I, I, I'm basically contradicting myself. In the same vein that I've done so well in, you know, figuring out Armored Armadillo and its patterns, I can apparently not figure this out. But hey, a nice solution to this problem is if you've got the upgraded X Buster, you can charge up the boomerangs or almost charge up the boomerangs and fail like I just did. Doing so will allow you to have more range in trying to take out Stink Chameleon, which is nice. Yeah, this fight in general is not any more difficult than it was before. You do have the upgraded X Buster with the weapon, so that should help you if you want to take that route a little bit. A little bit of weird screen tearing there, so that's nice. That Stink Chameleon blows up. And hopefully you didn't run out of boomerangs. Because you can go ahead and grab yourself a weapon and energy power-up, which is nice. I have just enough to, to do that. Got both. See how uh, epic that was. You guys are welcome. Can't pull that one off. More often than, uh, more often than not, I will not be able to do that. So here we go. Another Spark Mandrel fight. Hopefully this isn't too boring. I know that these refights are just kind of part of what Mega Man's all about. So if you wanted to see the exact same fight again, you are. We're taking a little bit less damage though because of all the upgrades we've got. So I mean, statistically we should be doing better just by virtue of being more powered up. Some of these fights are actually pretty tough in the early going in the game, especially this one. I remember when I was doing practice of this fight a couple of times just to make sure I wasn't going to look like a complete goober. But I really struggle with it because Spark Mandrel does a ton of damage and it's not the easiest one to, to dispatch. He has kind of a weird attack cycle. So I bet you'll never be able to guess who our next Maverick is going to be. Now that we're underwater, it's definitely going to be Flame Mammoth. So we have these stupid sucker fish. Which, I was trying to use my X-Buster, but I accidentally burnt through a ton of my Storm Tornado, so that was not cool. But that's okay. So I wasn't able to show this off the first time around that I fought Launch Octopus. Because I didn't have it yet. But now I do. So if you have four boomerangs, and you shoot him, or it, with uh, the boomerangs, you can knock its arms off. And what that does is it prevents it from doing that Whirlpool attack where... It'll post up in the middle of the screen and spin around and suck all your energy. So if you want to get sucked by Launch Octopus, don't cut its arms off. But I'm not a fan of that. 
So get your rolling shield out. And use it to, to rebuff those missiles. And there it is. Each fight getting a little bit easier. Maybe these are just supposed to be kind of like a good practice, like a good warm up for the final stage mini bosses that you're going to have to deal with, which are a little tricky. I mean, Vile wasn't too bad. Uh, Rangda Bangda wasn't too bad. But the last ones are a little trickier. So I guess this is the game kind of throwing you a little bone saying, hey, let's see what you're made of. See if you can figure this all out. Can you put it all together? Can you beat this game for children? After coming so far. So unfortunately, after wasting tons of my storm tornado with that stupid puffer fish, I'm going to be on the outside looking in with Flame Mammoth here. Thankfully, Flame Mammoth is not a particularly tough maverick. But you are going to get to see what happens when you run out of its special weapon weakness and what happens with the goo. So I didn't get to show what happens with Flame Mammoth's goo last time. But uh, yeah, it's it can he can set it on fire. Use that as a bit of an accelerant and set you a flame. So yeah, I'm just gonna play around here with some of the other items. I don't have the weakness in particular, but like I said, not a particularly tough boss, so. I don't need to be super conservative with any of my remaining weapons. But once again, this seems to be a sort of an odd theme with the homing torpedo, is not having the sprite that you're attacking being on screen will cause you issues and not being able to actually do any damage to it. It has to physically be present, which I think is a little annoying, but... No harm, no foul. Flame Mammoth. Truncated. So here's a, a mini boss that is very interesting. This is D-Rex. D-Mike plays, taking on D-Rex. So it's a weird dinosaur car. I don't, I don't quite really know what this is, but I do know one thing is it loves to give you the chomp. You don't want to get caught in its teeth here. So we're out of, well, we have one more. We're about to be out of boomerang cutters, which is unfortunate. And we're out of sub tanks too, so things are getting a little hairy. We're gonna have to use other items and potentially just the buster the rest of the way out. So D-Rex isn't a super tough boss, as you can see. Its attack cycles are pretty easy to avoid, but if it does get you, it does a lot of damage. So you, that's kind of one of the themes of these final bosses. Like even with the upgraded armor and protection that you have these bosses are going to do a ton of damage i guess that that's just the way to it to equalize it so there's a little bit a little bit of damage inflation to combat how awesome we are with our new armor but that's pretty much it that's stage three of sigma i believe that's all the mavericks too so all that's left is the final stage we're going to take on the final bosses of the final stage and put a bow on this bad boy. So, I did a little bit of grinding, which you won't necessarily see because I cut that out, but um, if you equip the rolling shield all the way until you're powered up and you see these little caterpillars that are on the side of the stage, they will give you lives, weapon energy, health energy. I would recommend filling up your sub tanks. Like, it, it's foolish not to, so just go ahead and do that. So here we are, being greeted passive-aggressively and pretentiously by Sigma. He's got a little pup. So for some reason, he thinks it's a good idea to let his dog get the first jab at us, but this is actually probably the easiest fight of all of the Sigma stages, besides maybe the Vile fight. This one's pretty easy. Those two are kind of comparable. For some reason, this dog is incredibly weak to shotgun ice. Like, super weak to it. Now, one of the things that I learned at this fight that I wasn't doing before, which kind of makes sense, I didn't understand what shotgun in the shotgun ice meant. You can fire that against the wall, and then the rebound weapon energy will 
still do damage and just very quickly blow the dog up. It's like that's that's what's kind of weird about these final stages is you've got these battles, these fights, these moments, which are meant to be like really climactic and like really tense, and then that happens. Like you've got Sigma touting how great his dog is and how he's like, oh, I'm gonna let him get the first jab in, and then he just kind of explodes after a basic fight. Same thing happens with 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 Zero when he died. Anyway, so we got Sigma here. We got Star Wars Sigma. I'm not sure how Capcom was able to evade getting sued on this one, but this is a really hard fight. Uh, this was not my first take of this fight. I have done it many times in the past to kind of practice. So Sigma is going to be wall jumping. He's going to be swinging his lightsaber at you. If that lightsaber does hit you more than once, you're pretty doomed. So don't feel bad about using your sub tanks here. I've already burnt through two of them and the fight is only, you know, like halfway done at that point. He can shoot weird little beams from his head. I made that look easy. Um, that was probably my best take ever. This is the first time when I do these run-throughs and I record, I make sure that the recording is, this is the cleanest one you'll see. So now Sigma is going to fuse with his dog. I don't know how that works exactly because I thought that we exploded it, but I don't know. So anyway, you've got two paws here. You've got the mouth of the dog. The paws are going to be your ticket to doing damage with the rolling shield. That's the only item besides the X-Buster that's going to do substantial damage. And the hitbox is just the head of the dog. So be mindful of that. You can climb on the paws. And when you climb on the paws, they're going to shoot little lightning bolts. So stay to the very left or the very right of each side of the paw if you can to avoid getting hit. The paws just from doing damage from touching them or the lightning is a ton. So just be mindful of that. Use all your sub tanks if you have to. This is kind of your, you know, this is the final boss. So go all out if you can. He's gonna spew weird, weird little orbs and fire. The one downside to this fight, which is pretty tough, this is actually the first time I've ever beaten it, um, is how, once again, it feels kind of anticlimactic. The music isn't really tense, it's not really hyped. The lightsaber Sigma fight felt way more tense than this one did. This one just kind of felt very matter of fact. So we've got Sigma having his agenda ruined, his narrative exploited. He wanted to eradicate humans, but X, not about that, not about that life. So we don't feel bad, we just warp out of there. And then we just kind of blow up his fortress, which I don't know where that's going to explode. It's going to apparently fall into the ocean, but that looks like a pretty big landmass. So even if all of the humans weren't, you know, wiped out from the Mavericks and from Sigma, like that probably did a pretty decent amount of damage. Also, in this final scroll, like this feels like this was written by like a 14 year old who has no creative writing experience. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if this was written by somebody from Capcom Japan and like English is not their first language and so maybe it doesn't quite translate as well, but this whole thing is ridiculous. So I'm going to read it for you guys just because I think it's hilarious. The war has ended for now and peace has been restored, but those who sacrifice themselves, nice little uh, hyphen there, for the victory will never return. Exhausted, X gazes at the destruction he helped cause and wonders why he chose to fight. Was there another way? This is so cheesy, I'm sorry. Like this is so heavy handed and goofy and cheesy, and, like very 90s. It almost feels like, like an 80s, like Karate Kid film. Standing on the cliff, the answer seemed to escape him. This part is especially good. He only knows that he'll fight the Mavericks again before he finds his answer. So apparently Capcom didn't take any like basic film classes where, you know, showing is better than telling. Now we have the wax poetic about you know, the emotional side, the existentialism of Mega Man. How long will he keep on fighting? How long will his pain last? Maybe only the X-Buster on his hand knows for sure. Like this feels like something that I would have written when I was a kid, playing Mega Man and being told to have like a creative writing piece in like middle school. Like, yeah, write about something that's like, you're really passionate about. Like other people are writing about stories about like their family or like relationships they have. And then I'm gonna write some goofy, stupid, story about Mega Man X, like some alternative tale that didn't need to be put into the world at all. 
So there it is. If you're interested in knowing the name of the enemies, here you go. One of the ocean stages thinks it's called Amen Hopper. That's kind of weird, but uh, yeah. So that's it. This is Mega Man X. Um, hopefully you guys all enjoyed this. This is my first time actually beating the game entirely. I hadn't finished it curtain to curtain when I was a kid. I was just too much of a of a dum dum, so I could never really get it. Never finished it. That was the first clean recording that I had where I was able to take care of everything in one fell swoop. So I'm pretty proud of that. Hope you guys enjoyed how epic I was. But yeah, that's it. It's a great game. I know that I like to joke around about it and, and tease, but it was their first attempt at something like this. So, oh, the dog's name is Velgauter, by the way. I'm sure that's something German. I don't know what it means, but hopefully I didn't offend any people from Germany. But yeah, this is this is a great game. It's the same way that I feel about Donkey Kong Country, the first one. You know, it's not it's not perfect. It's not the kind of game that is going to win you any awards. Maybe it did. I don't know. But I think Capcom did a great job with, for the for the time with what they had available, the resources. You know, this game came, came out in 1993 and or maybe 1994, one of those two. But for the early 90s, you know, right around the inception of the Super Nintendo, this game was pretty great. It's always going to hold a special place in my heart. I'm always going to enjoy it and play it. It's like what I talked about in the Donkey Kong Country video is how this is one of those games you can just blow through. You can just play many times over and over again. It's very cathartic. It's very, it's like the comfort food of video games for me. That's why I started this series. That's why I play these games, games that I'm typically familiar with that I can just kind of sit back and relax and enjoy. Because what's the point of playing a game than to do that? You know, and as you get older, you know, games aren't really all about just trying to be a completionist and all that stuff, whatever. Some people are really into that. I'm not into that as much. I just like to kind of sit back and relax and have fun. So anyway, I just want to say thank you to everybody who followed along to this amazing game. Enjoy this jazzy tune as the credits roll with some, once again, goofy names like they did in Aladdin for those credits. But yeah, enjoy yourselves. Thanks for watching, everybody. There's going to be a new series that's going to start up. Three new series, actually, because Donkey Kong, Aladdin, and this are all done now. So... Thanks to Elf being the great sound designer, we can have this swinging tune. Enjoy this a lot. And uh, yeah, be, be on the lookout for the three new series that are going to be starting up. I actually don't have any experience playing any of these three games that are coming up. So the first three I did, these next three I don't. Just like Honolulu Yama would want. So once again, thanks for watching everybody. Thanks for enjoying yourselves. I've been D-Mike. This has been Super Nintendo Sundays and the finale of Mega Man X. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.